Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the TacLife S10 Pro Robotic Vacuum Cleaner. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. You can see the really nice retail box in packaging right here, walking us through more tech specs, product images, and we have their customer service and contact information on the side for you. So this is a smart RoboVac with LiDAR navigation. This is a two-in-one RoboVac, so we have cleaning and mopping built right in. 2000 PA for the suction, and we have app control with iOS and Android devices. So from the app, we can set virtual walls, no-go zones, and our own custom cleaning schedule. In regard to battery life, you can expect around 90 minutes depending on the suction setting that you choose. This also has a 570 milliliter dust bin, and it has a 270 milliliter water tank. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. So here are all the package contents. First up, you can see we have a really nice quick start guide that's included, walking you through product preparation and Wi-Fi setup instructions. Then we also have a full user guide and manual right here, walking you through step-by-step -step in multiple languages, everything you would need to know from safety information to preparing your environment for cleaning to product overview. So we can learn all about the RoboVac, all the different parts, pieces, filters, modules, the charging dock and station, how to prepare it for use again, how to download the Tag Life app, how to use the app with all the different settings and cleaning modes. And you can see too, we have a how to use the mop function as well on page 14. Then you can see we have our routine maintenance as well for the dustbin and the mopping module. And we have routine maintenance again for cleaning the main brush, the omnidirectional wheel, the sensors as well. And then you can see we have a FAQ section in case you have any problems for additional troubleshooting. And then everything repeats again in multiple languages. Really quickly too, you can see the specs, 2600 milliamp hour battery right there. Model RCS0 for the charging dock and S10 Pro for the vacuum itself. Next up, you can see we have our mopping module right here with a pad already installed for us. And we also have an additional pad included. Dampen the pad, wring it out before using it. Don't use on carpets, don't add detergents or disinfectants. And if the water is coming out slowly or not at all, be sure to pull this tab up and you can clean the air vent right there. That's how you're gonna fill the tank too. Here it is from this side. Again, there's just Velcro, which so is Velcro's on. And then you can see it'll slide right off. So you can follow that arrow indicator on there. You can slide it on and slide it back off and just Velcro it into place for easy cleaning. And again, really nice. We have an additional pad included. Next up, you can see the side brushes right here. We have one we're gonna use in a spare replacement side brush. Then you can see we have the included power cord for the charging base. We have the charging base right here. You can see, looks nice. Good grip at the bottom too. You can see a lot of grip for the charging dock. So it's gonna stay in place. The vacuum won't bump it as it goes in and out with the nice grip there for the good feet. And you can see the charging contacts right there. Next up, we have a replacement filter as well too. You can see that. Make sure if you are gonna replace it or use um, a new filter or if you clean out the old one and it gets damp because these are washable Just make sure you let it dry for around 24 hours before you use it again And last but not least we have the vacuum cleaner itself right here Look at how great it looks with the tack life T logo on it and their branding right here Love the black color scheme. We got our power button and our return to home button We can also hold this down for a couple of seconds to activate spot cleaning mode and we can hold down the power button for a second to activate cleaning as well. So we can turn it on and off and we can set it to clean just by pressing it. Then we can also return it to home or hold it down and do spot cleaning. We can open up this flap too. You can see we have instructions right here for emptying out the dustbin, washing the filter and allowing it to dry for 24 hours. We can remove that and you can see here's the filter. We can just go ahead and we can pull that out. There it is. Dustbin's great. And then you can see if we can open it. There you go. Easy to empty. Nice arrows letting you know how to install it. Again, we have our indicator lights right here with our reset and our Wi-Fi options. We have a nice included cleaning tool, easy storage. Never forget where it is. It's right there integrated into the vacuum. 
very nice. You can see the navigation sensor right here that's gonna spin around and navigate. Here's the front sensor as well and our collision bumper. So you can see on the vacuum, you can see how we have a front bumper for navigational purposes. Here we go at the bottom, you can see the omnidirectional wheel, our charging contacts, our cliff sensors. You can see all those, so it's not gonna go off of your steps or anything like that. Here's the two included wheels already attached, 0.8 inches, again, of climb height. Here's the main brush that's removable just by pressing that and you can pull the whole unit out right there. Here is the contacts for the mop module on the back. We can go ahead, let's slide that in so you can see what that looks like. You'll fill this up and then you'll just gently, it just slides right in place like that. And there we go, we have now attached the mopping module to the vacuum. And then we can go ahead if we want to remove the module, you can see right here. We just have to go ahead, there's buttons on the side. So here we go, you can see the two side buttons. So just push those buttons and then it releases right out and we can just slide it right back in as well too for easy installation. Now let's go ahead, let's plug everything in, let's set it up, download the app and try it out. So we have the charging base plugged in and ready to go. We've also removed all the protective film and packaging from the vacuum cleaner. Now we're ready to install the side brush. So let's go ahead, you can see how we're gonna attach it. It's got a square end that's gonna fit right there. So just line it up and gently push and press in place. You'll hear it click in and now you can see the side brush has successfully been installed right there. Now we're ready to go over to our mobile device, download the Tac Life app. You can scan the QR code or search your app store for Tac Life and let's finish setting this up. So now we have the Tac Life app downloaded on our mobile device. Once you have it downloaded and you create a profile, you'll be at this home screen where we're ready to add a new device. So select the big orange button, add device. Now choose the product you want. In this case, we wanna select robot vacuum S10 Pro, so we can select that. Now we need to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Please note, this only works with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. So find your network and enter your password, then select the next button. Once you connect to your network, you're ready now to reset the device. So we gotta go ahead, we gotta hold the home and the on and off buttons for a couple of seconds until we hear a waiting for network setup. So there we go. Now we can confirm. We can also open up too, just to see. So we got the Wi-Fi icon blinking blue right there, but you can see it's flashing right here for us. So we're ready to confirm. It's blinking slowly. Select next. Now we need to connect our mobile phone to the device's hotspot. So let's go ahead, let's do that right now. You can see the network right here, SL Tac Life dash B8D3. Let's select that. And now let's go back into the app. So there we go, it just said everything is connected and complete. We can return to the app. Now we can confirm, and now it's gonna work on adding the device for us. So there we go, the network was connected successfully. You can see we have our device name right there. We could change that if we want, but let's leave it as S10 Pro for now and select done. And now you can see it's successfully been added and it's taken us directly into the device settings. So let's go back out. You can see all of our devices now. We have successfully added the S10 Pro. You can see it's at 77% in charging. So now we're back in the S10 Pro settings. You can see there's no map set up yet because the vacuum hasn't done its initial clean. But in the top right hand corner, we have the edit icon where we can view our device information, change the name, tap to run and automation settings, third party controls like Alexa and Google Assistant we can set up. We can turn an offline notification on. We can also share this device if we want with friends or family members. We have our feedback and FAQ section, add to home screen. We can check the device network. We can also look for updates and remove the device as well. And then you can see back on this screen, we have some settings at the bottom that once it populates, we'll be able to go over. But we can look and still see cleaning time, sweeping area and battery life percent. We're at 78% right now and charging. We can select those three dots and we can learn more about the vacuum right here. So we have manual. You can see we can do manual mode right there. Look for machines. We can look to try to pair with other machines. We can schedule a cleanup right here. So we can choose our minute, which days of the week we want it to repeat. 
And then what do we want to have happen? So what suction setting do we want? You can see we have multiple options. So we have one, two, three, four options right there. Then you can see water level, low, medium, or high, depending on our floor and our preference. So we can change that. Then we have our cleaning position as well too. So you can see we, we can designate room cleaning. Very nice. We'll come back to look at those features once the map has been set up. Then you can see we can also reset the map if needed. We have our suction settings again. You can see the different options. Our water quantity as well too for the mopping feature. We can turn breakpoint continuous scanning on. Basically, it'll come back to that spot and, and uh, re-clean after it charges again. We have voice and volume. We can adjust those settings right here and change the language. We have our cleaning history as well. It takes a nice record for you. We have consumables management, so we can learn more about the life of everything here. The brush, you can see corner brush and our filter as well. Let me know guys, you can see the remaining life in minutes. We have switch to do not disturb if we want. So you can see it will not automatically resume cleanups during that specified time period. However, scheduled cleanups will still be carried out during that time. And then you can see we can view device information right there. So that's where we can really tweak all of the vacuum settings. Now let's go ahead, let's try out manual control. So you can see we got the manual controls up right here. It's very simple, guys. Just push the arrows and you can see it's gonna fire right up and drive for us. Look at how responsive that is. It's not gonna drive right off either. You don't have to worry about that going forward. It's not gonna fall off. Just be careful going backwards, it can fall off. But you can see, look at how responsive that is to the turns. Just tapping it slow and you can see the very fine-tuned adjustments that it makes. So let's drive it this way. Same thing, not gonna fall off, even at full speed charging at me. No issues there. Very, very responsive. Rotates around freely, good job navigating. Look at that. All with just finger controls within the mobile app. So you can see, if you hold it down, that's how far it's gonna turn every time Then you gotta press it again. Going forward, going backwards, super responsive. Now let's go ahead, let's activate the return to home. So let's push that and let's let it find its way back to the charging dock. So it's looking, scanning, lined itself right up and it's coming in to charge. Begin charging. There we go, it's that simple. Now let's go ahead, let's use it to clean the house. Now you can see the RoboVac in action right here as it goes back and forth in a logical S pattern to conduct its cleaning. And you can see it avoided that obstacle right there with the high chair. It didn't even run into it, it sensed it and it's staying on the same path in that S pattern as it cleans back and forth. It's gonna do that again. Then you'll see it'll turn around right there off the screen. And now it's gonna come back, following that same pattern going back and forth over and over again with a really nice and clean and precise clean thanks to that LiDAR navigation. Here it is from another angle, cleaning in the kitchen. You can see it's going along the cabinets right now. Mapping out the perimeter right there in the kitchen. And what's nice is that side brush is actually lifting up a bunch of food particles out from under our appliances. And now it's gonna resume its logical cleaning pattern. Now you can see the RoboVac as it climbs up that carpet square, and now it's back down. It also brushes up against that really thick shag rug. It is unable to climb its way up there. It would have a hard time with really thick shag carpet like that, so keep that in mind. But your typical hard surfaces and floors, as well as your carpet 
no issues there. And you can see as it transitions between the two seamlessly. Mapping the house and doing a good job cleaning in that logical S shape pattern. So you can see in the bathroom how it does in a low light environment. There's no lights on in there. There's no windows. It's pretty dark. It's navigating just fine in the half bath. No issues seeing and moving along. It's doing a good job cleaning in that tough space with a tough lighting environment. Now for this test, I'm going to try to drive it off this ledge going into the basement and you'll see that the sensors will kick in and it won't have any issues navigating this obstacle. So let's go ahead. Let's try to drive it off. Here we go. And there we go. You can see it won't go off. You can try, you can try, you can try, but it will not go off the ledge. So the sensor is working properly to prevent the vacuum from falling or going in an area or down an obstacle that it's not supposed to go down. Now I want to show you guys what it's like when you try to drive it on shag rug. So you can see we have a shag rug right here that's very, very, very unwelcoming to Robovacs, regardless of make, model, or brand. It just does not get along with robotic vacuum cleaners. So let me show you what happens as we start to drive this vacuum onto the shag rug. So you can see it makes its way up and it is cleaning, but it's a really thick rug and sometimes the rug gets tangled in the brush and you can see it's having a harder time turning there, but this is actually doing a really good job on this rug. Most of the time they end up getting stuck in some capacity. So I'd say it's not as responsive, but it's actually doing a lot better than I had anticipated. Usually I make a virtual wall so they don't go on these rugs due to the difficulty. But surprisingly, at least in manual mode, if you're controlling it, you can actually vacuum a rug like this too, which is pretty cool. And then you can see right here, there, it's stuck. It's stuck there. So let me try to see if we can get it unstuck. We're having some issues. It's turning. There we go. So it got itself free as I'm driving it. But just keep that in mind. Manual mode, you might be able to clean a rug like this. Typically though, it's not advised for a vacuum having a hard surface floor or just regular carpet is going to be where a vacuum like this thrives. So now we can take a look at it on the carpet as it cleans. I'm going to drive it back and forth. So you can see super responsive. We have the high suction setting on right now. No issues turning or navigating on the carpet. Does a really good job. This carpet's decently thick as well too. So plenty of ground clearance, no issues as we clean the carpet, bring it back in the frame. Nice lines and patterns too. Can drive it all around. So now we're ready to try the mopping feature. You can see on the floor, we have some dirty marks right there. We'll see if the mop is able to get that clean. We have it on the maximum water flow setting and keep in mind the first minute or two that the mop starts to work is going to be the best minute or two in regards to application since that is when the pad is the wettest since you're supposed to damp it and wring it out when you initially put it on. So let's go ahead. Let's drive over that area and see how it does. Now we're going to keep mopping more of the kitchen. So you can see the last remaining area that we haven't mopped yet. The difference between the wet and the dry.
Now you can see the floor is mostly dry right here and we didn't wipe it down or anything like that. We're just letting it air dry naturally and all of those spots are gone. So keep in mind the mop feature works great for light spots on your floor, but anything that's really caked in there that you'd have to scrub, rub or anything like that, it's not gonna be the most effective, but just for a light clean, almost like wiping something down with a paper towel, that's what you can expect with the mop attachment and this vacuum cleaner. So keep that in mind. If your pet has really muddy paw prints, they're probably gonna stay on the floor even after the mop goes over them. But for those light stains that you saw earlier in this video, you can clearly see that they have been removed and wiped up and cleaned away with the mop. Now that the vacuum is finished cleaning and mopping, let's go ahead, let's look at the dustbin to check out everything that it was able to pick up. This is just in one pass going around my first floor. And keep in mind, I have a RoboVac that runs every night and cleans my floor. So this is what we got just with one clean. You can see in there, a lot of pet hair. I have a dog and a one-year-old. So we have a lot of pet hair and crumbs. That's what I'm expecting. And then just gently open that up and you can see we can pull out, look at all that hair. And then we can empty in all the food crumbs, dirt and debris that we get just from one pass right here. So let's put that right back in place. And you can see everything it was able to pick up. Pretty impressive, really thin particles, pieces of grass even in there, sticks, a lot of pet hair, some human hair as well. You can see those fine particles, fine dust particles and, and um, everything else that we got. I see some glitter it looks like. It really picks up a wide variety and range of objects. Again, that's just one pass through at my house. And I even have a RoboVac that runs every night. So clearly that other one is missing some stuff. So now that it's finished cleaning, let's go ahead, let's pull up the app again. Now we can see the map that it was able to make for us. So let's go in there. You can see it's gonna populate the map. Great looking map. You can see I went ahead, I added some forbidden areas as well. Don't forget we can use virtual walls and we can subdivide this into different rooms. If we wanna command it to clean a certain room, we can do that within this app. So you can see very nice job, very realistic map, does a good job really mapping everything just in one pass. Then we can select if we need to edit the room, we can select the room edit option. If we wanna add a forbidden area like I did right here, just select forbidden edit. And then you can see we can push the blue plus button and now we can bring in a mop forbidden zone. So again, right here, maybe we don't wanna mop because there's carpet, that's how you can do it. Or we can add a mop and a sweep right there. Then we have the A all section, I believe that's supposed to be wall. We can add virtual walls. So you can see here's a virtual wall. We can move that one around freely, however we want to extend out a virtual wall and barrier. Very helpful, like for me with my dog's food bowl. Sometimes it likes to attack it, so it's good just to put a little virtual wall up or a forbidden area around stuff like that. Then you can select save and it will add it to the map. Same with room edit right here. You can see it's gonna populate the map. Then we can either merge areas, split areas, and name areas. So we can select the split option. And now you can see we have this little icon right here. We can split a room however we want. So you can really move this to your desired area. And then you could separate, maybe you wanna separate like a kitchen area, kitchen space something like that, you can do that with this. So you just bring this in, choose the room you wanna split, how you wanna split it, and then you're free to go ahead and save that. Check out that line, pretty crazy, right? So you could split it maybe left or right, however you wanna do that, you can right here, and then you can select split. Then we could merge back into, if we separated a couple of different areas and we wanted to merge it, I have around, let's just say, 700 square feet or so of surface area to clean with a RoboVac. I personally don't split it in rooms, but you can do that right here and you can name it. So if you just wanna clean the bathroom, the kitchen, the family room, whatever, you can do that right here. Little goofy with the split option, but you can see, you can move it around. It defaulted to that area again, and then that line kinda of goes a little crazy, but you could just move it around to work it in to the area that you want to split. There we go. Let's go back out. Now you can see we have the smart cleaning mode at the bottom. We have the spot mode too. That's great if you have a certain area. You just want it to clean really quick. 
it can do that for you. We can select the rooms to clean. In this case, we only have one room. You can see that, then we can go. Then we have our zones too. We could set a zone if we wanted to clean a certain zone. You can do some zone cleaning right here and you can choose the sweep area. So there, that would be the zone. And then how many times do you want to clean that zone? We could expand it. So some nice customizable options. We can go back to the charging station. Also want to show you guys really quick, let's go back into the settings earlier, look for machines. This is not to find the machine to set up originally. This is to identify the vacuum if you can't find it in your house. So watch what happens. I'll push it. The robot is here. It just says the robot is here. The robot is here. So you can see that that's how you do it. And don't forget guys, battery life is kind of obsolete now. This is gonna be powerful enough to get through your whole first level wherever you have it. If it's not for some reason though, don't forget you have the breakpoint continuous scanning. You can turn that on and it will resume cleanup from that spot after it recharges. So keep that in mind. I'd say somewhere around less than a thousand square feet, you'll be able to use this in one charge, even on the high suction setting and uh, you'll be all set and ready to go. But if you have a lot of square footage, maybe it just has a little bit more difficult of a time navigating your terrain, has to use more power, whatever, you should be able to not even have to worry about that if you're okay with it taking, you know, just a couple hours to clean because it'll clean as much as it can, then it'll return to home, charge back up, and then finish cleaning that other area that it never made it to as long as you have that setting enabled. So really a lot of customization, a lot of great features here. Everything's working great. Now let's go ahead, let's try it out with voice control. So we're gonna be setting up our RoboVac with Amazon Alexa. We have the Alexa app opened on our mobile device. Now we need to select the more option in the bottom right hand corner. Then we gotta choose skills and games. Now in the top right hand corner, we need to search for TAC Life. Let's go ahead, search TAC Life Smart, there it is. Now we have to select the enable to use button so it can link our account. They walk you through step by step how to set everything up. And the commands we get right now at the time of this video are to turn the vacuum on and to turn the vacuum off. So very basic functionality, but it is nice that we do have voice control. So go ahead, select enable to use. Now you can see it's taken us to our login page where we have to find our eight digit code. So you can see more services link with pin and you're gonna enter your eight digit pin right here. So we got our pin, let's go ahead. So we entered our pin, you can see we're ready to authorize it. Now it's gonna load. And there we go, our account was successfully set up and linked. So now we're ready, let's go ahead and try it out. Hey Alexa, turn on RoboVac. The robot is starting the Check that out. Works great. Hey Alexa, turn off RoboVac. There we go, it just paused the vacuum as well. So we could turn it on after the battery dies down, it can make its way home. Or if you have to pause it for some reason, you can use Alexa or Google Assistant if you want to make the vacuum stop. So you can turn it on or off. If you want it to go home though, you'll just have to let it run its course, do its cleanup, and then it'll make its way home automatically. So let me show you guys my final thoughts after reviewing the TacLife S10 Pro RoboVac. So first thing I wanna point out is this has some of the best navigation available on the market today. You definitely wanna get a vacuum cleaner that has LiDAR navigation. Whatever one you're considering, make sure it has that. You just get that many more smart features added to your vacuum. And your clean is a lot better too if you have this navigation because the vacuum actually knows where it is. It makes a great realistic map of your house and it gives you that nice logical cleaning pattern. It's not reacting to obstacles and just going about in a sporadic miscellaneous way. It's methodical, it knows, and it's continually learning as well. So keep that in mind, whatever one you get, you want the LiDAR navigation. Typically in their design, if you're just browsing images, they will have this unit up top, but make sure you confirm whatever one you land on that it has LiDAR navigation. You should also then be able to pick up the great features that this vacuum has, virtual walls and barriers, really a nice touch. Also, if you're on a tight budget, 
I would highly recommend getting one that's a two-in-one. I love the mopping feature. It's not fantastic. Like it's not gonna replace you scrubbing your floor physically or anything like that, but it's good enough for a lot of instances. Just like a RoboVac in general won't replace you having to vacuum some areas around your house occasionally, this can clean, you know, 90% of your house 100% of the time, right? So I'd rather have that versus me trying to vacuum every day. I'd rather have something that gets 80, 90% of the whole house clean versus me trying to clean it every day. So that is why I'm a big fan of RoboVax overall, the value that they add, saving you time to focus on things you wanna do. Maybe you wanna exercise, maybe you wanna watch TV, whatever it is, you have just offloaded one of your tasks you can occasionally do some touch-up vacuuming or mopping if you need to. But again, this can run day in and day out on a set schedule for you to do all of your cleaning. That's why I think it's a great value. Again, ladder navigation is great. The mapping features are wonderful as well. Now, with that being said, there are a couple things I'd like to see improved in the future. I couldn't find a way to set different stories. So I have a two-story house. I'd love to have a map for down below and a map for above. I wasn't able to find that feature yet. Maybe in the future, that will be something that is added as they continue to develop and build out the app. Also, in regards to the two-in-one mopping, doesn't matter if it's this unit or all the other ones I've reviewed, I really wish the mop outputted more water. So it's great for the first couple of minutes as you start because you get the pad wet first, you know, right before you install it. So that first, you know, couple of feet, first minute or two as it's moving around, the pad's really wet and does a good job. As it continues to move around your house, the pad will dry out. It does interject water, just not enough in my opinion, even at the maximum setting. Now again, depending on your flooring, that might matter. And again, if you have wood floors and stuff, then that's really a good thing for you. But for me, with my vinyl plank, I'd love to have it be even wetter to just give me a little bit better of a clean. But I love the mopping feature. It's really cool, very happy to have it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Also, other than that, I wanna point out the Tack Life app is the Smart Life app, the Two Year Smart Life app. So with that being said, I'm looking forward to the future, more integrations that they have. You could see very easy to use and navigate, but since they did build out their own app on top of the Smart Life app, there are a couple of typos in there. I think just in the future, it'll be a little bit more responsive and more fluid like your typical Smart Life products. But I do like that it is based off of the Smart Life app. I use that for a lot of other products. So it's very easy to integrate with your smart home. And that's really important too, since you're using a smart vacuum. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.